All right, when you have it centered and you're ready to start opening it, you want to make sure you do one last check for center. And it's a pretty simple little thing to do. But it's important that you're 100% on center before you start opening this because once it's open, if you try to cone and compress or recenter it, you're not going to be able to because the opening you create um, will close off and create a giant air bubble in there. So you don't want to just open it up right away. What you want to do is just take your hands, lock them together like this, and just do a little, little dimple on top where you're going to start opening it. So then what I'm looking at is that circle should be perfectly on center with the circle that is my clay, and both those should be on center with the outside of my wheel. And when that looks good, then I can open it up. So to open it, I'm going to use two hands, controlling this finger, and I'm going to push my finger down into the clay. And as I push my finger into the clay, I have to remember that I need a bottom on this piece of pottery. So I have to leave about an inch and a half to two inches of clay between the tip of my finger and the surface of the bat. So if you hold your finger up approximately an inch and a half to two inches and see where the top of the clay lines up with the side of your finger, that gives you a pretty good idea of how far you can push your finger into the clay. Then put some water in there and same hand position but now I'm going to start pulling back on the clay so I'm gently putting pressure back towards myself I'm using my whole body to anchor my arms and just gently pull back and when I see the clay start opening that's the right amount of pressure I don't want to change how much I'm pulling on it if I change the amount of pressure as I'm doing this it's going to pull the clay kind of unevenly and that could pull the clay off center so it's a nice, steady, slow pull. And you want to keep your hand traveling straight back towards yourself. Don't push down anymore. Don't lift up. Just straight back towards yourself. And of course, that all depends on what you're trying to make. I'm just trying to make sort of a simple cylinder kind of shape. So I want to bring my hand straight back. If I was making a more of a bowl kind of shape, I might start bringing my finger up a little bit to start creating the curve at the bottom of my bowl. So what I need to do now is compress the bottom so that I make the bottom denser and stronger. And I'm just going to use my sponge and I'm going to push down against the clay on the inside with my fingers through the sponge. And it's always two hands working together. Take your time. And then I usually take my sponge and just put it over the lip of uh, my opening here and just kind of compress that a little bit. Oops. And I can slow my wheel down quite a bit now. The faster your wheel is going, the easier it is to cone and compress. The slower your wheel goes to a certain extent, the more control you have over the clay. If it's going too slow, you can't get the clay to move very evenly. So you need to have some speed. All right, so my next step here is to get the walls to start growing. So all this clay, this thickness right in here, all the way up through here, I'm gonna put pressure on it between the pads of my fingers. So this part of my finger and these parts of my fingers. Left hand inside, right hand outside. Right hand's all the way down to the bat. I'm going to push the clay towards my left fingers. And that squeezing of the clay will make the clay move upwards. So when that starts to happen, then I follow that movement and I keep putting pressure on it. And as it gets taller and taller, it'll get thinner and thinner. So as I get closer to the top, I'm letting off on that pressure to some degree. If I don't, I'll end up tearing the clay apart. So my hands, again, are always working together. I usually have my left thumb riding on my right hand and that just helps with stability. And you got to get that pressure just right. 
so that the clay moves. And it's not going to be, be a big dramatic movement. You know, you want to take your time. Bring that clay up a little bit at a time. And if your clay gets a little bit off center, you get a little bit of a wiggle to it, you can get your hands really wet and do some collaring. And collaring is just putting your hands around it, gently squeezing, and sliding your hands up the clay. And that will help push the clay back onto center, get that clay back under control. So most of the time when you're bringing up your clay, from about here up, the clay gets to about the thickness you want. So you don't want to squeeze any more up there, but you still want to slide your fingers across the clay to help keep that clay under control and to guide it into the shape you want. But down here at the base, it's still pretty thick. So I can do, you know, one or two more pulls. So right about there, I've let off on the pressure and I'm just guiding the clay now. Just trying to keep everything symmetrical. And you can see I got a little bit of a wiggle to this one. Which, you know, it happens. It's not a bad thing. It's only when it gets out of control and you lose it, that's when it's a bad thing. So I need to do some trimming on this now. I'm going to trim the top off just because it's a little uneven at the top. So to trim, I'm going to take the needle tool and hold it in my finger on my finger like that. I put my left hand right here and a finger inside. I'm going to take the needle tool and I'm going to slide it slowly across my thumb so it cuts through the clay. And then lift off that excess clay that comes off. And then I take my sponge. And I just drag it on top to clean that all up. Just a simple cylinder shape. All right, so then down at the bottom here, I want to get rid of all the excess clay right here. It gets kind of thick from here to the inside, so I'm going to shave a bunch of that off. I want the pot to look as complete as possible before I cut it loose from the bat. We're eventually going to flip this upside down and trim the bottom of it. In order to do that, it has to be even, it has to be finished on the top, finished on the inside, and the majority of the outside finished. So right down here, I'm going to take this tool, I'm going to hold it like that, my other hand on top, I rest my hands on the splash pan, and I'm just slowly working my way in, shaving away that clay. So it always works better if you aim this tool kind of off center a little bit to the left so that as it shaves the clay away the idea is that it pushes the clay away from the pottery and if it doesn't if you get a big goober on there you just shave it off and you can use the other side too That's what I'm trying to accomplish. All right, so then I'm going to take my wire tool. And I'm going to slowly spin the wheel and run the wire tool right underneath there. So push down with your thumbs, pull out. You know, pull your hands apart so that the wire stays nice and tight, nice and taut. And it'll cut it off real cleanly and easy. And then you have a simple little form.